Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how to create super big oceans without any problems or lags. So let's get started. The idea behind it is to use a super detailed ocean patch, a small one, and render the texture animation of the ocean out with the foam. And then using the render texture on a clean plane with displacement maps. So everything is actually stored in the material and not in the geometry. Just make sure you can use the cycles render engine because this one is necessary for this technique. All right, let's go to the first step. Start by adding a normal plane and in the modifiers tab, add in a ocean modifier. Within the ocean modifier, we can change a lot of settings and create super detailed oceans. But if you scale them up, they can get super laggy and hard to run for your PC. So first what we are going to do is up the resolution viewport to 16, just to get an idea how the final result will look. The final render will be in 64. If your PC can handle it, you can also up the viewport resolution to 32 to get an even better idea how the final uh, image will look. To already get a bigger patch, we use the spatial size and up this one to 300. Then in the waves modifier, we can play around with the scale, choppiness, wind velocity and all the other settings. For reference, I like to add in a cube. This will just show me how big the waves actually are. So if we up the scale to 2 and lower the wind velocity, I can get a feeling how big the waves actually are. Let's say this one is a boat, so those waves are actually quite big, even though they maybe look not that big from far away. To get more variation in it, up the alignment, also up the direction to maybe 20 degrees. And if you want sharper waves, you can up the choppiness. So let's say if we put this to three, the waves are like super pointy, but in my case, choppiness of one is all fine. To add in foam, we have to activate it. And to actually see it now, we have to give it a name. So we just name it foam. Let's go into the shadings tab, add in a new material. Let's put the base color to black, the IRR to 1.333, which is the IRR for water, put the roughness to zero and the specular to 0.25. In the case of water rendering, I will use a different light setup, this one right here. This one just looks a bit better. Now to see the actual foam, we have to add in a attribute node, plug the color into the base color, and in the attribute name, we have to type in foam. All right, as you can see now, we have generated some foam. And if we go into the modifier again, we can change the coverage here from zero to minus one. Don't worry, this looks like way too less foam, but you have to keep in mind the foam generates over time. So the longer the animation goes, the more foam will build up. That's also why under bake, there is a setting called foam fade, which will determine how long the foam stays. We can leave the foam fade at one. And if you are happy with your scene, you can change the start and ending frame of the bake. So in my case, I change it to 150. Choose a location folder for your bake. And after that, all you have to do is press bake. This can take up a lot of time because the render resolution is 64. But the good thing is we only have to do this process once and then you are set. So let's jump to the next step. After the bake is done, you should have 150 displacement EXR and also 150 foam EXRs. In Blender, we can hide this plane right now and let's add in a circle. In the circle settings, we can change the radius to 200 and the fill type to triangle fan. If we scroll all the way out now, you can see the plane is super big and, and the viewport won't show it anymore. To fix that, we can go into view and change the end to 10 or even 100,000. This should fix the problem. Let's select the circle, go into edit mode and with the edge selection, we can press alt and left click on the ring outside, press E to extrude and you can right click to snap it back to the beginning. With S we can scale the whole thing down. Scale it down right about there and then let's add in some loop cuts. So press Ctrl R and scroll your mouse wheel to create some of the loop cuts. 
Just for your information, those triangles in the middle here will render completely different, so the texture will look actually quite, quite weird. So let's hit Alt, left click again, scale this one down, press Command R and add in some loop cuts over here, just to also get some details in the middle. With that done, I go into the rendered cycles viewport and add in some HDRI just for the light setup. For this, I use the Easy HDRI add-on. You can use that too or just load in the HDRI manually. After that, let's go into the render settings and make some changes. We need this setting right here to be set to experimental because this one will enable us the subdivision tab under here. And in here, we will change the rendered rate to two pixels and the viewport to four. The smaller the amount here is, the more details you will get. The off-screen scale we can set to 10. This just makes sure our PC won't explode while watching the whole thing. And you can play around with the max subdivision, you can leave it at 12, which is perfectly fine. I will up it to 16. Selecting the circle again, we will add in two subdivision modifiers. So let's add in one and the second one. And the second one let's change to adaptive subdivision. This will use the settings we just defined in the render tab. Now we are ready to create the material. Let's go over into the shadings tab and add a new material. Let's change the base color again to black, the IRR to 1.333. This is the IRR for water. Let's put the roughness to zero and the specular to 0 0.25. First we will bring in the waves and then the form. Therefore we add in a image texture node. With the image texture node selected we can press command T and if you have the node wrangler add-on activated you will get those two nodes. Other than that you can go to edit preferences, search for the node wrangler add-on and activate it. Let's open up the image texture and search for the bake which has created before. To only see the displacement EXR we can just search for D and this will only show us the displacement EXRs. Press A to select all and open image. This will open up the images as a sequence and here you can see we have 150 frames. Make sure you select auto refresh to see the animation. Alright, now we have to add in a vector displacement node. Let's plug the color into the vector and the displacement into the displacement output. Everything will look weird, don't worry. We have to change the tangent space to world space. In the mapping node over here, we change the type from point to texture and also change the connection over here to object. This looks already way better, but the waves are super, super tiny. So we have to change the scale to 300 and the location X, Y to minus 150. So half of the 300 here. And as you can see already, we have some waves, but they look super flat. That's why we have to go into the material tab, scroll down to settings and change the displacement from bump only to displacement only. Now we can still see nothing, that's because the viewport shading mode can show the displacement. So we have to switch over to the rendered viewport. And as you can see now, the waves are here in full glory. Hey, Fabe from the future here. I just realized while editing, I totally forgot two very important nodes. And those nodes come in between the displacement and the vector displacement. So we need to add in a separate color and a combined color. Plug them in after each other and then connect the green with the blue and the blue with the green node. If you see now the waves look way more realistic. If I just plug in the displacement in here, you can see the waves are super flat. That's also why in the video the waves are kind of flat. I forgot this step, so just plug this one into the separate color and the combined color into the vector displacement and you have a way more detailed texture. Alright, let's continue with the video. If we now take the plane and scale it up, you can see the texture gets distorted and the waves flatten out. To prevent that from happening, let's go command set back to. To prevent that from happening, we will add in a empty. Let's change the size in the data to 30 so we can actually see it, but don't scale it up, just change the size over here. Let's select our circle ocean again. And under the object right here, let's select the empty which is created. Because now if we scale up the circle, 
we can go unlimited far and the wave texture will stay the same. So you can create a super super big ocean without any limits. Alright, let's add in the waves. Therefore, we need a second material, so let's pull this one out and type in Mix Shader. Plug the shader into the output and duplicate the principal BSDF. Let's move this one up and change the color to white. Let's give the thing some roughness, maybe 0.2, and plug this BSDF into the bottom shader tab right here. Now let's duplicate the image texture node down here. Let's move this one up. Let's make this a bit bigger and let's go into this image texture node and now we only need the foam so let's search for F, press A to select all and open image. The mapping and texture coordinates are the same so let's plug the vector into the vector right here and then let's plug this image texture into the factor of the mix shader. And as you can see all the foam should get transported over. Sadly if you go super close the foam looks a bit pixelated we can try to fix this I will show you how but you can get rid of it 100% first what we can do is add in a bump node connect the color into the height and the normal into the normal of the foam texture this one will blur the foam a little bit out and give it some kind of uh, 3d look in my opinion it looks a little bit more realistic and a little bit more blurred out which also helps now what else we can do? We can mix it up a little bit with a noise shader. So therefore we need to add in a math node and plug this one into this connection at the top right here. Let's move this one up a bit and let's create the noise texture. To view a single node we can press Ctrl, Shift and left click to just view this node right here. The noise is way too big so we have to up the scale to 500 this is a good size and we up the details to 4. Now let's plug the noise texture into the math output right here. Change it from add to subtract and let's view the mix shader node. So select this one, press shift, control and left click so we can view all of it again. I just realized why we have so little foam. That's all because we have to go into the timeline and scroll to a later frame. That's because the foam generates over time. So as we defined in the beginning, the foam fading is one second. So as you can see here, the foam will generate and then last for a second. So if you skip to a later point in time, the foam will be generated. If you go to frame one, the foam only started to generate. Also again in this point in time we can move the white slider down to have less foam and move it back up to have more. And yeah that's actually it. Now you can select the plane, scale it up as big as you like to create a super super large ocean and as I said, the middle part looks a bit weird. That's because we have the triangle shapes right here. So make sure if you film a scene, go a little bit to the side, get a more realistic texture. All right, thanks everyone for watching. I hope you learned something today. I hope you can create super beautiful 3D shots with it. And yeah, thanks for watching. Leave a like and peace out.